All right. Good morning, gang. Hope everyone's doing well and is excited for our first Money Matters Mastermind of the year. We uh, are double dipping today. We have our Money Matters Mastermind and our Profit Share Mastermind coming together to talk a little bit about both of those and what you can expect throughout the year this year for each one of those. Um, but you know, want to just uh, start with a, a shout out to to Meatloaf. Uh, we lost a real one today. That song "Bat Out of Hell" uh, was actually it's twelve and a half minutes long. So I thought about playing the entire song, uh, but you know, since it came out in nineteen seventy seven, so I thought that probably dialed Jarecki all the way back to senior prom. Uh, you know, that's probably, uh, he probably, he probably had the 12 minutes slow dance with, uh, with his date for that one, but, uh, really excited, uh, to have you guys here. We're going to have a lot, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Um, seeing some, uh, some newer and some more familiar faces. Uh, he, uh, he, <laughs> we are going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to dive into a few different things. Uh, related both to the financials of our company and to profit share. Um, and what I think is really cool uh, is that we as a company, Keller Williams, every Keller Williams franchise, but specifically Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan, or uh, and including Greater uh, Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan, we're an open book company, right? So all of every agent in this company has the opportunity to look at the income statement and balance sheet on a monthly basis for our company to see how we're spending, how are we investing, right? The contributions from our agents in terms of company dollar, how are we investing those things, right? Is it, is it, uh, is it going for me to put gas in my car or get my hair done, right? Well, you can actually audit and edit that uh, or audit it at least, and then throw a fit if that was truly the case and edit it. Um, but that's that's really impactful, and and so this is the this is the forum that we go over the financials at a very high level as a company every month, right? So we are committed to having an open and transparent conversation about our performance every month. We think that it drives accountability and also creates trust within our organization. Very very uh, important parts of our culture. The second thing is it actually ties in heavily with profit share, right? Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan is the fourth most profitable Keller Williams franchise in the world. And it's not like there's only five of them, right? There's six in Northeast Ohio and there's just under 900 worldwide. And the things that we do from a financial standpoint impact our profitability. But more importantly, they impact what we can share back with our agents through profit share. And so all of these things are tied together and it's really wonderful that we're going to be starting the year syncing up our quarterly profit share conversation and our monthly Money Matters Mastermind. So for those of you who've only been with the company for a few months or a few quarters, or maybe uh, like Tanisha, you've been with the company for a few years uh, and you're like, hey, uh, this is my first time popping onto one of these. I want to check it out. Here's what we do. Every quarter, in the first month of the quarter, so that's January, April, July, and October, on the 21st of the month, we hold a mastermind around profit share. And then, uh, and why the 21st? Because when you get paid profit share, which we'll explain how that happens a little bit later, you get paid on the 21st of the month, right? So we do one of those a quarter where we get together, provide some education, provide some support, provide some encouragement around growing your passive income through profit share. The monthly Money Matters Mastermind, as you might imagine from the name, happens monthly. Uh, and so each month we bring a, uh, a conversation uh, around finances, taxes, accounting, health insurance, uh, uh, life insurance, agent financials, bookkeeping, profit and loss statements, uh, passive income, investing. We bring these conversations to the table monthly because we're committed to serving all of our agents as business owners, right? And your business is the business of real estate. Your business is helping clients buy, sell, and invest in real estate. 
our job is to help you build that business, right? And, you know, whether you use the old adage, it's not what you make, it's what you don't spend, or the most important part about making money is keeping it, whatever it is, we want this conversation around finances to happen regularly and in a way that really helps you maximize the utility of the money that you earn in this wonderful industry. And so we kick off each month by looking at our business as a market center, sharing the, that with all of you, because as much as you might model your business off of ours, we also model our business off of yours. And you're going to see a couple places where that shows up. Uh, before I dive in, uh, is there any, uh, any questions or anything you'd like clarified or hell, anything you'd like covered today uh, as a part of this session? Go ahead, put it in the chat or unmute uh, if you've got anything. There's nothing right now. I will, uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So if you can, get me off of your screen and swipe over if you're on your phone to this share screen. So what we're going to go over first, guys, this is our, our, our monthly financial hit sheet or overview. And this really hits on our key performance indicators for each month. Right, and allows us to look at where are we with a few key metrics and how is that flowing through the bottom line? So the first thing we start with is recruiting, right? Uh, if we were an agent, you might start with clients or names in your database uh, or some sort of leading indicator with who are you actually getting into business with? We, we start with the same thing. So, uh, in the month of December, uh, we had uh, a few agents move their businesses from other companies to ours, and we also had uh, a lot of agents start their careers with us, to totaling 14 agents. That took our total agent count as a company to 450, ensuring that we were the largest real estate office in Northeast Ohio, uh, as well as the most profitable, as well as uh, doing more volume and units and selling listing, more listings than anybody else. Um, and that took 34 appointments to get there. So, you know, when you think about your business and you think about, I got to go on listing appointments, I got to go on buyer appointments, I got to, you know, those are, those are your key performance indicators, your lead indicator. It's the same for us, right? How many people are joining our company is completely indicative of how many people we're meeting with, right? You can't have 14 people join if you're only going to have 13 meetings. You can't sell 20 listings if you only take 15, right? It just doesn't work like that. So we follow that same mentality here, and that's one number that we pay attention to. So then we look at, hey, what's going on with our agents? What's happening with agent production? How does this compare to the universe that we're operating in? Well, we look at contracts written, right? And because that is a really strong, and if you're not looking at that for yourself, I would encourage you to, because you would say, you know, you can't sell a house to a buyer if you're not writing a contract for them, right? So how many contracts are you writing? Having a lot of buyers, having a lot of pre-approved buyers, having a lot of active buyers, and having a lot of buyers writing contracts are four very different things, right? Knowing somebody that's eventually going to buy a house is a buyer. Knowing somebody that wants to buy a house this month is an active buyer. Writing a contract for someone means that they're ready to party, right? And so we see 369 contracts written, which is down slightly from the previous December. And our total, our year to date, that's what the YTD means, our year to date numbers were up 4.7%. So throughout the course of the entire year, we wrote more contracts in 2021 as a company than we did in 2020. Now that down 9% might flash pretty high. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Now it's all, you know, the year over year comps are always contextual. So December of 2020 was the, uh, one of the best months in the history of real estate, let alone best Decembers. The fourth quarter of 2020 was the strongest and most disproportionately strong fourth quarters in the history of real estate. So down nine is actually not that bad if the previous year you were up 15. All the context matters. So similar to contracts written for 
buyers buying, listings taken or listings going up is very important from the listing side of the business, right? You can't sell what you don't list. And so we track that and we say, hey, 149 listings went up in December for our company. That uh, doesn't seem like that much. Wow, that's one for every three agents, right? Uh, that's not that much. Well, it is December uh, and it is uh, historically one of the three lowest listing months of the year. But we were up 4% December over December. So that's strong. We we're up 6% year over year. That's really strong. So uh, the opportunity there for our agents to be selling and closing business in January, as we look, it's on the listing side going to be pretty strong. And despite looking like it's challenged on the buying side from a contract's written standpoint, it actually is pretty strong as well, uh, knowing the context. So we might look at something like this. And if those numbers were really down, we might say, wow, why? What's happening? What's not happening? Is there a market reason? Is there additional training that we need? Do we need to rethink things? Is there something happening in our productivity coaching program that something that isn't happening that should be happening? And we start to analyze things that way so that we can retool what we do as an office to better impact and serve the agents. So now we move into the top line financial information, right? So this is coming, you know, we looked at what's happening at the at the one-to-one uh, -one level or the agent-to-client level there with agent production. Now we're going to say, how's it all roll up across our entire company? Well, we did $30 million in GCI. GCI is gross commission income, gross commission income. So that's all of the commissions generated by all the transactions that took place. And that was up 1% in December and up 14.1% on the year. So very strong year, right? Home values went up, we sold more homes, that tracks. Company dollar. So company dollar is when you receive a commission check and you see some money come out for Merwood Real Estate Group, that is company dollar. That's the contribution towards your cap, right? And so in the month of December, we had just over $225,000 in company dollar contributed by all of our agents. With that, uh, that was down 3%. So, you know, down uh, just a few thousand bucks um, on the month, but you'll see we're up for the year. Now, this is, this is what's really neat, right? If you, if you stop and you think about like, all right, what are we... What are we actually talking about? What did Mike actually just say? And what does it mean to me? So if I say that there is um, $225,000, right, off of um, the 30, let's just call it 30 million in, uh, in GCI, right? So those gross, that gross commission income generated by our agents was $30 million the company only hung on to 225,000. So um, when we think about splits and caps and who's getting what money, if you looked at throughout the entire year for us as a company, um, the whole, the whole, the whole uh, ball of wax for all of our agents, you put all of our agents together, the company's on a 90-10 split. Right. And that's really cool because that means the higher that gets, that means the more agents are coming in, building a business, hitting their cap, and then doing well beyond the two and a half to three million dollars it takes the cap and keeping a hundred percent of those commissions afterwards. So this is, you know, really flips the this, this standard traditional brokerage model thing on its head because we're in this game to make sure that you all make as much money as possible. That's why the cap structure is the way that it is. And so when we see that happening for more of our agents or in bigger ways for more of our agents, we know that we're getting some things right from culture training support. So profit share is the amount of money shared each month with agents who, uh, who have helped grow our company. So profit share was just over $100,000 and was uh, up 1% from December 2020 and up 14% for the year. So that was our most profitable December ever, um, despite 
not having as much revenue, right? So I want to make sure that we understand that. The $225,000 of company dollar is what we run the company on. And what's left over is shared from a profit standpoint, 48.52, 48% goes to the agents in the company who've helped grow the company. So we did less revenue, but more profit in a month. That's a really strong financial position for a business to run on. And part of what helps with that is our partnership. So you hear from Greater Metropolitan Title and America's Preferred Home Warranty, and you hear from Cross Country Mortgage every week on our sales meeting. And these are folks who support our agents and their clients in a really big way. And then they're also a part of the equation for what makes us such a profitable, robust, successful, and abundant market center because of our partnerships with them, we're able to generate more revenue through those partnerships, which drives our profitability up, which makes it easier to have nice things and also be an extremely profitable company. So when you support Greater Metropolitan Management or you work with GM Title or you work with America's Preferred Home Warranty instead of the other guys and Cross Country Mortgage as well, sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out there, Don. Um, what you're doing is you're, you're creating an opportunity um, for everything to get better by, you know, us all playing or stroking in the same direction. We're all, we're all rowing in the same direction, right? Uh, when that happens and those things stack. Now, this is where I would probably break into a 15 minute diatribe about permaculture and the way to plant multiple crops in the same square foot, but I won't do that today. But just know that when you work with the title company, you work with Cross Country Mortgage, who guess what? They work with each other on darn near every deal. Uh, you know, they partner together a lot. So your title company, your mortgage company work really well together. And hey, let's say you got an investor and you throw it off to the management company who knows how to manage properties for 75 of our agents uh, already over a thousand doors under management, you're getting a huge benefit. And that benefit actually continues to drive the growth and success of your market center. So really cool. I will tell you what's unique about the way we do things here. And if you've been on one of these before, you've heard me talk about it. These partnerships, um, they don't have to contribute to the profit share, but they do. The way that our ownership group has set up our um, our finances is that the money that goes in to a title joint venture or a partnership with cross country or to America's preferred home warranty in a lot of company or in every other real estate company, but even in a lot of Keller Williams offices, that money just goes to the owners. The agents don't get a share of it. The agents don't get a benefit of it. It's taken after all the books are cooked then there's, you know, look, last month alone, there's over $50,000 that could be taken and just taken by the owners, but they say, no, put it in the pool with everything else and let's continue to grow this company and let's continue to benefit our agents. And that's why our company is growing at the rate that it's growing. It's why we're the number one office in the MLS. It's why we're the number four office in the world. And it's why we're going to continue to have the success that we do because of decisions made from a cultural standpoint, 20 years ago when this company was founded to today. So really powerful. And then finally, we're going to close out the conversation with just some general real estate data. So this is a roll up of, uh, of our units volume and sales price as a company. So December, 412 units closed. That's down about 6.6%, but we're up on the year. You're going to hear me say this a lot, and uh, I apologize now because you're going to hear it each and every month, probably. The thing that we want to pay attention to is units, right? You can control whether or not, to a certain extent, a house sells but you can't control necessarily what it's gonna sell for. The market is gonna drive sale prices up. They're gonna bring them down. Don Jarecki is gonna change the interest rate. It's gonna change the, the uh, appreciation of homes year over year. If we're selling more units as an agent, as a team, as a company, that's a good thing. Markets will do what they will do, which is fluctuate, right? 
but you either do or don't sell a unit, right? And if it's 225 or, you know, in December it was 218,000 average sales price. If it was 200, right? You got to sell 11 units instead of 10 to get to 2.2 million, right? But that's control, but you don't have to go find a way to sell a $500,000 house. That's your business model. Great. But what I'm saying is when you think about your business, think about it, appointments, contracts, units, right? And then you can control those things instead of, because you would never say, oh, that's a $150,000 house. I don't want to sell that. You'd sell that. Yeah, it's five grand, $4,500. Five grand on the list side, 4,500 on the sell side or buy side. Um, all right, closed volume, total volume down 2%. You can see the market's appreciating because we sold 6% fewer units, 2% fewer, lower volume, um, but up 14.6% on the year. So think about that. We sold uh, we sold about 150 more homes last year uh, in, in on total in the year, and we racked out uh, almost 100 million dollars, 150 million dollars more in volume. That's huge appreciation. And then finally, your average sales price year to date, we finished just under two and a quarter uh, for average sales price. An important thing to track important thing to uh, be aware of just so you know what on average hey if i do 10 units that's 2.25 million okay great know that um, so that you can you can do the rest of your business calculations but don't fixate on that volume you're going to hear me talk often about how important it is to fixate on your units because that's what you have control over all right gang Questions, comments, concerns, letters to the editor. What do you got for me? Uh, what stands out? What do you want to know more about? What were you like? I figured you would talk about this. Anything at all? Put it in the chat box. Unmute yourself. Nancy, perfect timing, showing up just in time to talk about profit share. What a shocker. All right, guys. Well, if you, if you don't have anything else, remember, if you go to mykw.kw.com and you go to access my reports, you, there's a under reports, there's a financial section where you can see uh, where you can see the income statement and balance sheet for our company and any other company in uh, any, any other Keller Williams in the world. I think you have access to all of them. You at least have access to ours. Um, and that's really neat because then you can see like, hey, where's this money coming from? Where's it going? And if you have questions, please ask me, hey, why is it going there? Why are we paying for this? Why are we paying for that? I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, so all those things can be directed towards me. Now we're going to have a little, uh, a little convo about profit share, right? Because you see this line here that says we profit shared over $100,000 uh, in the month of December alone, I want you to know that half the market centers in the world, they'll pull that off in a year. Uh, and and uh, so what we do here is pretty special and pretty impactful. Um, but sometimes we talk about profit share and we talk about these big numbers and we talk about these things that are, you know, uh, you know, we kind of get starry eyed or they, they feel like shiny objects almost. But I want to take the opportunity today to talk a little bit about like how exactly does this profit share thing work? How exactly did Nancy Emmerman make? Uh, what'd you make, Nancy? A little over two hundred thousand dollars last year. I mean, unmute. I mean, you don't make me get Marty on the line and get the exact number because I know he's counting his pennies. No, I know it was two nineteen nine. Two nineteen nine, right? Yeah. yeah. Now and Marty there, never brought anyone in. Yeah, well, he's, I mean, he's, has he ever even sold a house? Yes. <laughs> Not so, this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, that, that sounds, you know, for a lot of people, they're like, oh my God, that's so, uh, that's amazing. And, but they don't really understand the mechanics of profit share, right? And so it's important um, that we're going to start there. Uh, and then, um, and then from there, I'm going to talk just a little bit about a couple of things that you can do. 
right? Because I, I can tell you, I've known Nancy uh, for years now, and um, I, I promise you that there isn't some witchcraft or winning lottery number or some secret script that she's using, right? She does a few things very well, and I'm going to talk about those. Because if you're interested in participating in profit sharing, look, I understand if it, fe- you know, when I'm done talking about it, you're like, ah, that's, you know, too confusing. I, I, I would never ask somebody to, to, to take a call from my team leader. I would never ask somebody to uh, join me at an event. Like, it's just not who I am. That's fine. I, I completely understand. I also know looking at some of the people in this call, you know, you're three months, six months into the business. It might be the furthest thing from your mind. You're still here. You're getting educated. There's no expectation that you go and you put 15 people in your, in your, uh, in your profit share tree tomorrow, but knowledge is power, right? And if you understand the benefit and you understand most importantly, what happens, not just today, not just tomorrow, but in five years from now, what, you know, what it could look like to, to, uh, to be earning a substantial amount of profit share on a monthly basis it's absolutely possible. But how exactly does it work? Is it that, you know, hey, I just got to, you know, I got to befriend Mike. Mike takes $100,000 at the end of each month and he decides who gets it. No, no. Let's first talk though about where the money comes from, right? Because I think it's very important to understand where the money comes from. There's often some confusion about how some of these things work. Now, I just, uh, can I get a thumbs up if you can see my whiteboard okay? Are you thumbs it up, and Nancy? There you go. Thank you. All right. So a few minutes ago, I talked about company dollar, right? When you contribute uh, money to Merwood on your distribution authorization, that comes in as company dollar, right? And that's money that comes out of your commissions and goes to the company until you're capped. We then have expenses to run the company on. We got to have some, uh, you know, keep the lights on, keep the printers running, coffee, um, you know, uh, salaries, rent for the office, right? All those things. And then what's left over is profit, right? Now for you as an agent, you have the same thing. You generate commission, you have expenses, and what's left over is your profit. Wonderful. Um, here's, here's the first amazing thing. For every other real estate company in the world, and yes, I mean every other real estate company in the world, this is where the conversation stops. You might say, but Mike, what about what EXP does? It's not profit share. They're not sharing their profit. Mike, what about what Tony Geraci does at Century 21? He said I could get 5% profit share. It's not profit share. He's not giving you profit share, right? What we do here is we run a business and what's left over is profit. When in every other company, they do the exact same thing. And what's left over goes to the owner, goes to the broker, goes to the investors, goes to the stockholders. Here at Keller Williams, we have one more step. We split this profit into owner's profit and profit share. Profit share is 48% of the total profit and profit, owner's profit is 52%. So just in rough math, if we as a company shared just over $1.2 million in profit last year, shared that much, that means that our owners, based on the model that they've adopted, made the collective decision that they were going to take a basically an equivalent amount, almost $1.3 million and say, uh, you know, that's good enough. We don't need this other 1.2, right? But there's, it's a really powerful part of our culture, right? And because we reward the agents who help us grow the company. And you're probably wondering, because you've heard me say that four times, what exactly do I mean by that? And number two, it requires us to be an open book company, right? We keep a really low expense profile right? But if we were going to pay for, uh, you know, me to have a company car, that would be an expense that would reduce the owner's owner's profit and profit share. 
if we were going to, um, you know, uh, blow money on, you know, uh, certain uh, lavish things, or if our owners wanted to, if our owners owned the building and then jacked up the rental rates to pay themselves more, they could conceivably reduce these things. Our owners take a different position and they say, we, we've built this company effectively inside out for the last 20 years. Think about if 60 to 70% of all your business came by way of referral. Be pretty nice, right? When it comes to agents joining our market center, buckle up because it's 60 to 70% of the people that join this company join because they were referred by an agent in this company. And that's really powerful, right? And so when we say we reward the people who help us grow the company, Whenever you refer an agent or somebody who's in licensing school or somebody who just wants to learn more about a career in real estate, we put them into our system with you as the refer. Then when they join the company and they name a sponsor, they name the person who invited them to join the company, we've got record that it was you, that it was Tanisha Speed who said we ought to talk to Nancy Emmerman. And then we say, Nancy, here's profit share. Here's how it works. We explain the system. And we say, you know, as part of this, you name a sponsor. I know we got a new relationship because Tanisha invited you to one of our career nights. So it would be appropriate to name, uh, to name Nancy, right? Unless there's somebody else that is involved that we don't know about. Um, and so then Nancy gets named as, as her sponsor, right? The profit share pool. Right? Commonly asked questions. Is this the agent's money? No, it's not. You're not taking part of their commissions. You're not earning part of another agent's commission whenever you invite them to join the company. They pay company dollar. We run the a company with expenses. That creates profit, which then we pull from profit share. I want to pause there. Does that flow of finances make sense? Is there, do you have any questions about that? Is there anything that you're like, ah, kind of go through it one more time? I mean, you know, we've got, we've got time here. All right, I got a yes. I'm getting a head nod. I'll take it. All right, guys. So once we have this profit share and we're going to reward the person who helped grow the company by inviting people, What's really amazing and how somebody like Nancy Emmerman, who's only invited about, man, I think I, I was looking at the numbers last night, Nancy, I think it's like in 20 years, right? For perspective, guys, in 20 years, it's not even a hundred people that Nancy has, has uh, been named the sponsor for, right? Now you might say like, well, <laughs> I mean, you know, 80 people's a lot, Mike. Yeah, it is. But over a 20-year career with the company, that's one every three months, right? It's not like, you know, she went and set the world on fire and was pulling people in by uh, in off the street and just getting them to sign up. It's, you know, for her, it's one, one every three months over 20 years. And, and she made over $200,000 last year with, without even lifting a finger, right? From a profit share standpoint, I won't you know, the other 20 million that she sold in real estate probably didn't hurt uh, her, her bottom line in total either. How many people did you just say? I think it's like, I think it's 81. I was looking it up last oh, night. My first line? No, oh, your oh. all time, your all time first line. Your first oh, line, currently, I think. I have no idea. 31 people in it. I have, I have 31. I thought 31. I had 29. Well, you know what? We're going to look it up. But the point is, it's not like you have 500 people, right? Nope. And how, so how does it work? How does it work? Well, I'm going to show you how it works because it's not just about who you invite to the company. And this is where, this is really the secret sauce that allowed Keller Williams as an international company to go from one office in Austin, Texas with about 30 agents less than 40 years ago to a company that has almost 180,000 agents worldwide. 
and is the number one real estate company that the world's ever known. One out of every 4.67 houses that were sold last year were sold by a Keller Williams agent, right? That's almost 22 and a half percent of houses were sold by Keller Williams agents. And 20 years ago, and that's worldwide, or that's in throughout the United States, but 20 years ago, Keller Williams didn't even exist in Northeast Ohio, right? And now this year in 2022, we will, we will take total market share from Howard Hamm. It's going to be a really beautiful thing. But the reason that it works that way is when there is you, right? You are the person who joins the company. And then you name a sponsor, right? So I name, I can, I actually think that I can do this. We'll have to see how this goes. But I named Scott Phillips. Scott, when he joined, named Jake Lozier. Jake, when he joined, named Steve Toad. Steve named you, Steve named Nancy, right? What? Unmute, I can't. See, every time he sees me, he goes, it's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Steve named Nancy. Nancy named Marty. Who'd, who'd Marty name? Jill Katzenberg. Ah, uh, thank you, Carrie. Jill Katzenberg. And Jill named... Someone. Samya. Her name is Samya in California. All right. because She this, owned the market center. This was the, you know, Joe Katzenberg, Marty, Nancy, Steve, they were all part of the original nine that mixed this thing up, right? Not so Scott. Guy. Not Jake. No, these, th these folks, right? And then little old Mike. Right now, if I sold real estate, uh, it would actually make a difference to some of these people. But since I don't, they don't really get anything from me uh, or as a result of me. But here's what's neat. Even though Scott was the reason that I came to this company and I named him as my sponsor, whenever he gets profit share, right? So there's a, there's a, out of this profit share, There is a percentage that Mike Rapaski was responsible for, right? There's a percentage of the profit and therefore a percentage of the profit share that I'm responsible for because of my contribution to company dollar, right? Actually, let me, let me draw this a little better. So it goes company dollar, profit, profit share. So what happens is, MDR does a percentage of company dollar, which translates to a percentage of profit, which translates to a percentage of profit share, which translates to $100, let's say, right? So my proportion of company dollar down to profit share is $100 that is going to go to the, the people who, uh, the person who invited me to join. What actually goes to seven people down for who invited me to join. So Scott gets 50% as a reward for helping me find my way to the company. Jake's gonna get 10%. Steve Tote's gonna get 5%. Nancy's gonna get 5%. Marty is gonna get 7.5%. Joe Katzenberg pulling in 10%, and then 12.5% goes to Samuel. Now this is, Fifty dollars, $10, $5, $5, $7.50, $10, and $12.50, which adds up to $100. So this $100 that I'm responsible for proportionally for profit share is distributed accordingly to these individuals. So even though Nancy Emmerman may never have ever met me, right? Because she helped Steve find the company, who helped Jake find the company, who helped Scott find the company, who helped me find the company, she benefits. 
Now that's really, really, really impactful. There are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people. I'm not joking, Nancy, I think it's almost, it's a little over 800 for you. And there are people that you've never met selling real estate in countries you've never even heard of that you're being rewarded for. And so this is, this is where I get a little serious and sentimental maybe about the idea of profit share because it's truly a reward for helping people, right? And when you do that, you don't know the impact that you could have on another person by introducing them to our company. And then you don't know what that might mean to them and who they might impact or whose life they might change and what the rewards could be. I always encourage people, listen, profit share, especially at our company, is absolutely amazing. We're the fourth most profitable company in the world. We keep the lowest expense profile. If you had five capping agents, uh, five capping agents in your first line, you would make more money from profit share than you paid in company dollar for your own cap, right? It's really remarkable what's possible. And that's really sexy. But the really impactful thing is that all you have to do is, you know, it's just like my mom still sometimes reminds me, if you want a friend to be a friend, <laughs> right? You help people find their way here because it's what's best for them. You don't go put the hard sell on them and recruit the hell out of them and make them feel guilty if they don't show up. We have world-class training here and I, I spend most of my days telling uh, people about how amazing our company and our culture is. Um, and it, there's nothing like it. So it could just be as simple as inviting somebody to a, a training event. We've got a brilliant one next Thursday, right? It could be inviting somebody to just pop into one of our sales meetings, right? We're doing a really cool one on Tuesday. Um, it's that simple. Or the method that most of our agents prefer is you send me an email and you say, Mike, my friend Tanya wants to be a real estate agent. Can you talk to her? And the answer is yes. She goes into her file. She gets a, goes into our system. You get listed as a re referrer. When she joins, we encourage her to name you as her sponsor. And it's really that simple, guys. People approach profit share. I, I'm telling you, they approach this idea of growing their profit share by going out there and pounding the pavement and having the conversation. Oh, I got to tell everybody about Keller Williams. Please, yeah, do. But do it from the standpoint of, hey, I really liked working with you. We're doing this cool thing. Why don't you join us? Hey, it seems like you're having a hard, uh, a tough go in your first year in real estate. Are you getting all the help you need? You know, why don't you have, why don't you come in and sit in one of our coaching sessions, right? Those are the things that, um, that have a tremendous impact on people that lead them to our company. And then when they benefit from what we do here, you don't know who might go evangelize, right? Everyone thinks that Nancy has such a robust profit share because she was one of the nine agents who started the company. That's not the case. There was actually a guy that she introduced to real estate, that she introduced to Keller Williams, that happened to be the former paper boy of somebody who started a Keller Williams franchise. And that is way more beautiful than the idea that, oh, I had to be there early. Because <laughs> you don't. You don't whatsoever. Uh, but what you do have to do is care about people and make sure that they know what opportunities exist here at Keller Williams. Because even if it's your paper boy, who knows what impact that might have on him or her and what they might ultimately do for others. Nancy, I'm seeing some head nodding. I also saw you unmute. So do you wanna, you wanna share anything? Yes, I wanna share that I have, I've been in some uh, networking groups, networking opportunities, and I, I did not ask for houses, people who wanted to sell houses. I would explain to them, I'm looking for um, people sometimes downsized at that time, or people who want to look at a, become, um, work in a successful 
real estate business. Um, and I've gotten phone calls from lenders because they know it and uh, people in those groups that I was in. And they say, are you still looking for realtors? And that's how people have walked in the door. And I had nothing to do with it. Satrina Young, um, Rick Tannenbaum came in because he was downsized and you never know where anybody's coming from. I get calls all the time from people. I tell everybody I'm looking for realtors. They think it's for my team, but I go, my team is closed. The team's full. Yeah. <laughs> team's full. All right, Jeremy, did I see you on mute? Did you have uh, do you have something or am I making that up? I'm making that up. Okay, cool. So here's here's the here's the takeaway, guys. Uh, if you want to participate in profit share, it's very simple, right? You can introduce people who are interested in a career in real estate to me. You can introduce people who are currently in real estate classes to me. You could introduce your co-broke, somebody you do a deal with. And I always ask, who did you have a really fantastic deal with? I'd like to know them. And who did you have a deal with that you felt like the person on the other side, it was, they didn't know a darn thing about what they were doing. I also want to know them. Because listen, this isn't like, we're, not, well, we're above the brokerage war stuff, right? If somebody is out there trying to make a living in the real estate industry and they are not getting what they need, I want to talk to them. I want to help them. We know we're the best place for them, right? So it doesn't matter, good, bad, otherwise, you know, if they're, if they're uh, of, of good values and, and, a, and a fit for our culture, those are the, those are the, the two deal breakers for me. We've been spending, spending 20 years building this company inside and out with the idea that we're going to treat each other and our clients differently. Uh, and so if somebody can't get on board with that, then they're probably not going to be a fit. Uh, but other than that, we would love to help anybody. And then if you've heard all this and you're like, that sounds complex, that sounds hard, that sounds like something I don't want to do, you will never get pressured from me. Um, but know that um, 60 to 70% of all the agents uh, that join our company join because of someone else, someone other than me, effectively, or someone other than, uh, than uh, a member of the leadership team reaching out to them or recruiting them. It's all because of the agents in our office. And if you want to participate in profit share, we would love to have you do that. So I'll do a last call for, for questions here as we approach the top of the hour. And, uh, you know, with eight minutes left, I could probably get the rest of that meatloaf song um, dialed up. Any questions at all? Well, thank you, Jill. Thank you for being here. Well, guys, hearing nothing else, you all know where to find me. You know, uh, you've got my phone number and email. And uh, if not, probably look, you know, within the last seven days, I've probably emailed you. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, reach out to me. Um, and Nancy, I'm going to volunteer your services as well. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about these opportunities, uh, Nancy uh, is a huge evangelist uh, for the profit share organization or profit share, share opportunity. So um, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Stay warm, stay safe, stay off the roads if you can. Uh, God feels like it was the first, uh, first snowfall in the history of Cleveland, the way people were driving this week, but, um, get yourself, uh, get yourself to Monday. We will quickly be in February and then it's March and then it is spring selling season. So let's get after it now, Tuesday morning, nine 30, we're doing a market update. I'm going to be talking about what I expect from the market over the course of the next 12 months, how to make the most of it how to talk to your clients about it and why they should care, right? I'll see you there Tuesday morning, 9.30 a.m. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thanks for everything.